Mohammed Al Fayed, billionaire businessman, former owner of Harrods, and it's now alleged a sexual predator. Three months ago, Channel 4 Dispatches broadcast interviews with three women who used to work at the department store. They claimed they were groomed and sexually harassed by the Egyptian magnate. He said, if you don't sleep with me, I can't help you with your acting career. Since then, around a dozen former staff have come forward with even more disturbing allegations of multiple sexual assaults, one involving a girl who was just 15 years old. She visited Harrods with her mum just over a decade ago. She says she was spotted by Al Fayed and he offered her a job, even though she was only a teenager. It was so surreal. It was something where, you know, I just felt the lucky one. I just felt honoured. Um, my meetings would be often um, once a week um, in his offices upstairs in Harrods, top floor. She was being given an hourly salary for a weekend job. But soon, Al Fayed started offering her wads of cash as well. How much money did he give you? It was 50 pound notes. I can't quite remember the exact amount, but it was sometimes, I, I guess, about 300 sort of pounds. She was uneasy about it, but she says she was enthralled to him. Even when he showered her with gifts, perfume, a designer handbag, she didn't question his motives. I just saw the good in him because I felt he just wanted the best for me. And he was seen as a god in Harrods. He really was. And so a few months went by and then something happened which really changed the course of your life, didn't it? He came into the office one day, the, the, the large boardroom. He just uh, he basically just grabbed me to say hello, to hug me. And he just carried on hugging me and then hugging me, and then he just started rubbing himself on my chest, and I, just, I was just shocked by the situation. And I said, what are you doing? And he was telling me that I was turning into a beautiful woman, and then he grabbed my head, and then he tried to put his tongue in my mouth. So I pushed him off me, and um, he, he went berserk absolutely berserk, screaming at me to, to get the out. Screaming at me, never to say anything, and, and never to say anything to my parents, or to never come back again. And I felt stupid, because I knew then, <laughs> I knew then that I just had been a fool this whole time, and I should have listened to my I should have just listened to my instincts where I had funny feelings, but he was just so looked up at, and I just generally thought he had the best interest for me. And he just completely just went for me. And the fact that I pushed him off, this, this, how he reacted was just awful. She stopped eating, ran away from home, but eventually confided in her parents. They took her to the police. After a thorough investigation, though, the Crown Prosecution Service decided the evidence was conflicting and not sufficiently reliable. They told us there was no realistic prospect of conviction, so they dropped the case. Al Fayed has always maintained his innocence. Was there any sense in which, yes, it would, would have been really tricky to get a, su a successful conviction? Yes. I was, I was reminded that he was a very powerful man. A lot. And what do you want to happen to Mohammed Al Fayed now? Just to feel a slight bit of guilt and just to see what he's done because I feel like he just thinks he can get away with it. We've now found further evidence of similar allegations dating back more than two decades. We spoke to one woman who was in her early 20s when she started working at Harrods a quarter of a century ago. She said he immediately made her feel uncomfortable, but her unease crystallised during a business trip to his Ritz Hotel in Paris. She says he'd put pressure on her to go, and his eccentric behaviour the night they arrived only contributed to her anxieties. We all went to have dinner in the restaurant. Um, and I remember Fire doing weird things like 
putting lemon all over his plate to, and his fork to get rid of all the bacteria. He was paranoid about germs. Um, and he made a few comments about sex and boyfriends and things. After dinner, she says Al Fayed became overtly sexual. He wanted to dance with each of us. He kept pressing himself against me. He was kissing my face. Um, he asked if I liked his kisses. And even at one point, he kissed my nose. And I remember feeling very uncomfortable and a bit frozen. She kept a diary of every incident. I, your boss, if I tell you to take it, you take it. Recounting in detail the pressure Al Fayed put on her. A gift of perfume here, a wad of 50 pound notes there. So how insistent was he that you took the money? He was very clear and insistent and a little bit irritated that I had said I didn't need it. How did it make you feel being obliged to take the money? Um, very uncomfortable, a bit dirty. And I didn't know what was coming next. So you're pretty scared at this point. Mm. One incident in particular has proved hard to forget. She recorded his growing attention towards her in her diary. I don't want you having any boyfriends. I'm your number one, hey? And he pulled me towards him and he kissed my face. Um, he put a hand on each cheek and he kissed me on the mouth. She noted her reaction at the time. So I pulled away and he laughed and he could see my discomfort. Um, he asked me, don't you want to have sex with me? And I said, no. And he said, not now, maybe one day. And I said, no, never. Several other women who worked at Harrods have told us they too rebuffed Al Fayed's advances. One woman hired by him around a decade ago remembers that when she joined, she was made to undergo a full medical check, including a test for sexually transmitted diseases. I underwent a full, full medical. In STD tests, HIV tests, the, everything that you can think of. Which is a bit strange, really. Which is strange, yeah. Strange until she says Al Fayed began asking her to sleep with him and groping her breasts. He would kind of tug and make a joke like, what are you wearing, what are you wearing under, underneath this? Um, and he would try and look and his hands would go down your top and, and that was it. And he'd start fondling and you'd move, I'd move away. She went to see a lawyer and was advised to keep a diary. Just like the other women we've spoken to, she too was given wads of cash, sometimes 500 pounds a time. He was very persistent, she says, and one evening he became forceful. We used to have to take his figures up each night um, from the office up to his apartment. Um, and you would take the figures to his bedroom, which already sounds very strange. And at the time he'd had um, some kind of injury to his ankle, I think. So he asked me to put his shoes on, tie his laces. He was going somewhere. And as he did so, he went to emotionally undo his trousers and held the back of my head slightly. And that was the first time that I was very shaken, that it was quite physical and, and I was quite shaken. Al Fayed was explicit about what he wanted and the cost of refusal. If you sleep with me, if we have a good time together, if you sleep with me, I'll, you can have everything. You can have everything. You can have a flat on King's Road, you can have a car, I'll give you a better job. And I'd say no. And he'd say, wake up, you're stupid, wake up, you need to wake up. I think he gave me a, a time limit of a few weeks and if I hadn't changed my mind, then I'd be sacked. If you hadn't changed your yeah. mind about sleeping with him? Yes. Then then I'd be sacked. She'd lost her previous job when the financial crisis hit and was terrified of being without work again. But she says Al Fayed eventually got impatient with being rebuffed and sacked her. She called her lawyer and decided to sue. 
the claim itself was sexual harassment, bullying and discrimination. They came back quite quickly um, with an offer. Which was how much? Uh, 60,000. She accepted the offer and has not spoken about it publicly until now. Tonight, the tycoon's lawyer told this program the claims concerning the 15-year-old were false and Mr Alfayed was unable to comment further on our other allegations. He's now 88 and has retreated from the public eye. But the women who say he assaulted them want him to pay the price for the suffering he put them through.